Data Lake Query company uh, Barada has added text analytics capabilities to its flagship platform. And today we have with us once again, Uri Rishaf, Vice President of Products at Barada to talk about these new capabilities. Uri, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you, Swap. It's great to, have, uh, to be back at your show. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Before we talk about these new capabilities, I, I want to understand, and also from, uh, uh, for our audience, what exactly is text analytics and how does it help data teams or data scientists? It's actually a, a great question. Because if you'll ask this question to 10 people, I, I imagine you get 20 different answers. So let's, uh, let's try and, uh, and deconstruct it. Let's start with two big categories of text analytics. Because when we say text analytics, we say a lot, of, a lot of things, a lot of things that run through our heads. So let's divide it into two. Search on text, and we'll talk how, how this is done, and extract new information and insight out of the text. And we can kind of group it all the NLP, natural language processing, and all the magic that we can do with text there. Um, it's been around since the 50s, this uh, science, uh, the, this marriage between text and computer science and automatically understanding text. So this is the second category. Okay, it, it involves um, a word cognates like uh, stemming, understanding what is the root of the word and finding a cloud of words that is similar. Uh, text uh, summarization, you have like one million documents and you want to summarize them automatically. This is the second part of NLP. So when we're talking text analytics, we're talking two major categories. One is the search that we'll talk in, uh, uh, about, about this uh, function. And the second one is all the extract new information, uh, grammatical, semantic, advanced uh, insights from it. So all this is called text analytics. Uh, what we are bringing to the table and what we're going to focus on uh, uh, later on is the search capability. We can talk uh, also about all the uses, but these are the main pillars of, of text analytics in, in Gosomoyo. Now, let's talk about what are you announcing? Okay, what we are announcing is that we've added um, to our indexing cap capability. Our magic is uh, indexing and indexing on big data. Uh, and what we added is the Lucene Index, which is an open source project that exists since 99. Uh, and we added it to our indexing capability, meaning that today Varada can index using the Lucene open source library text and enable the first part, as discussed, search on text with Lucene uh, method of indexing. Lucene gives two things, indexing and search. Uh, we're using the indexing. Uh, uh, capability of Lucene, and we're using our own technology and patents to store those indexes and search on them. This is what we announced uh, recently. What kind of use cases are you targeting with this announcement? So, as we said, text analytics is huge. It is being used uh, all over. Sometimes we were not even aware that uh, speech to text is behind the scenes and doing, doing, doing magic. What we are uh, focusing on is the search capability. This is one. And two, on very, very large quantities of data, meaning directly on the data lake via Varada. The use cases that we're looking are all the log analysis. Whenever you search for patents, so log analysis, folder analysis, let me give you an, an, an example of folder analysis. Folder analysis is used a lot in marketing analytics because let's look at the URL structure, for example something dot something dot com uh, and then slash 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 let's say if i'm in a, a department store and i'm looking for shoes i'll have the url with the slash shoes slash men slash sports and, and all this is being analyzed in order to extract and to, to even begin to analyze you need text analytics because the url is a text and you need the capability to search and you need the capabilities of uh, regular expressions contains and like, and this is what we want to bring to the table. Do all this on unprecedented quantities of data, of text in this, uh, in this case. 
Excellent. Uh, if we do look at uh, text analytics, uh, this is not a, a new problem. Uh, this problem has been solved. A lot of enterprises, they are already using different kind of tools. It, it depends on you know, how capable those tools are or not. But let's talk about uh, some of the, the ways that enterprise are trying to tackle this problem and what kind of challenge it creates for them, because that is one of the reasons why you came up with this capability. Sure, that's, that's a great question. So. Text analytics has been around since the 50s, and people have been using that for, for many, many years. All the internet search is, you know, the, the basis, we will talk uh, uh, later about the, the different technology, but the basis is Lucene uh, since the 90s and before and uh, many other uh, technologies. Main use case, case is search. But then use cases started to evolve. Now let's say that I'm, uh, I have billions of chats or billions of reviews. That's very popular. Reviews of products or of content or anything else. And I want to know the sentiment behind a certain product or a certain uh, content piece. Then I will need very advanced uh, text analytics to do sentiment analysis, stemming, all the things that we uh, discussed earlier on. I will need for this kind of, of use case. And as I mentioned, Varada is not in this um, um, kind of, of use cases. What we want to do is to adapt search in text to data lake scale. What do I mean today to do uh, uh, log analytics, which is basically search. You're searching for errors. You're searching for patterns. You need regex. You need contain on a, a large log. So, what is happening in the market today, and the reason we came with, uh, uh, with the Lucene capability, is that people will use the monsters that enable those sophisticated things like sentiment analysis, like stemming, like engrams, etc., and are heavy and are expensive and are uh, not very easy to maintain. And once you grow considerably in size, especially in log or in marketing uh, uh, analytics, and your needs, your use case is search, you're uh, overdoing it and overpaying if you're using those big guns that enable real full text analytics. So what we're looking for is all those log and uh, folder analysis and all the use cases that are uh, bound to search and indexing where this can help and the scale blew up. And uh, this, this, is, this came directly from the market. Uh, talking about uh, tools, uh, so customers talking about tools, very expensive tools, and you know, grabbing their heads in frustration because size do matter and scale exploded. And what was valid uh, two years ago and worked fine, really fine, because these engines are really, really tuned for that. But at a certain scale, it breaks. And this is what we want to uh, bring to the market. The search on text, on data lakes, and at scale. At the core of uh, the work that you're doing, there is something called dynamic and adaptive indexing. I want to understand what role it plays when you add text analytics capabilities to your platform. As Varada, we start at the, at the lowest level, at the storage and the, and the network le uh, level. What we did actually, our revolution uh, for big data, is that we took the SSD media and we've um, cut it into very small pieces of storage, what we call nanoblock of SSD. Each uh, nanoblock, each portion of this, uh, this SSD is around the one kilobyte of, uh, in size. Now imagine uh, uh, an instance, a machine with, I don't know, X terabytes uh, of SSD and now, with Varada, this is cut into those small nanoblocks of one kilobyte. So you have millions and millions. Now, we're going to look at the data in the data lake in this prism, in this physical prism of very small uh, pieces. What's the now? Let's go into the adaptive. How do we do it? We look at a table and we look at one specific column. So we think like a columnar database in a way, right? So we look at one column and we look at the chunk that corresponds to this nanoblock of SSD. The equivalent is around, around the 60,000 rows of one column. And now we're focusing on that. Now let's look at this uh, 60,000 rows 
And now the adaptive part comes. We're going to look at the content. What is the type of the data? Is it integer? Is it float? Is it varchar? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one, one thing that we, we, we look at. Then we look at something very important in indexing, which is the cardinality. And in, in performance, uh, uh, in general, cardinality of a, of a column, so how many values do I have in total in a specific column is very important. So now let's say that I'm looking at a column that is temperature column and looking at IoT or some kind of a factory and my uh, cardinality is from zero to 1,000. So 1,001 values. It's, it's a challenge to index 1,001 values, but I'm looking at 60,000 row. I'm looking at the, this specific independent chunk, and, and I'm looking what is the cardinality there. Maybe the cardinality is three, because uh, for like the time period that took to produce those 60,000 rows, the temperature was between 35 and 37. And that's only three values that I have to index, not 1,001. So I will take from an array of indexes the best index, the most efficient one that will uh, index three values, those three values. And now the, the um, a dynamic part of it is that according to the needs of the query, I will decide if I want to store only the index in my uh, small nano block, the index and the data, Again, depending, we'll, we'll go into it, depending on the needs of the workload, depending on the needs of the query, or actually the data. So that's the dynamic part. So adaptive, we adapt the right type of indexes to the 60,000 rows in one column and, uh, and, and make an optimal uh, decision uh, based on that. And then the search will be very, very fast. Second is what do I need to put in my nano blocks? Is it index only? index and data or data only that we will decide according to uh, the actual query needs if i'm using a, this uh, temperature column that we're talking about for filtering well i only need to index but if i'm uh, using this column for index and grouping for example in in some way and i need the data so i will take both that's the dynamic part so we're trying to be very very efficient at several fronts at the end of the day, you index, you cache, you take intermediate results, you take storage space, and eventually we're, we're saving a lot in CPU and we're saving a lot in storage. So we're trying to be as precise as possible, adaptive indexing and dynamic, we decide what to store what to accelerate. You are leveraging open source projects like Apache Lucene. Uh, so, so talk about uh, these components, how you're leveraging, especially for this uh, text analytics. Okay, so we're, as a company, we, we are great advocates of open source. We like it and we participate in that. We take pride in the fact that we not only use the open source, we also contribute. So the first open source that Varada used is Presto. This, uh, uh, today, Trino. Um, Presto SQL, that was the uh, open source project, and we are a part of this community, and this is the technology wrapping Varada. What we did for the text analytics is we implemented the Lucene Apache open source Java library, uh, and, uh, and we are using for storing those document index, that's the, the, the uh, power of Lucene, in our nano blocks. And then you leverage it twice. Right, uh, you leverage the Lucene smartness of indexing. That's again adaptive. If I'm seeing uh, a column that is text, varchar something, or string something, uh, I will use Lucene automatically, and then I will store it in the, my independent nano blocks. And this will be a part of the mesh of indexes of Arada that come search. The search will be very fast because it will go on all the, the indexes. So you can imagine a mesh of indexes of B trees, of dictionaries, Lucene, uh, etc., all combined with Varada. And Varada will use the appropriate index for the appropriate search. And so, so um, open source is a, an amazing world. 
the communities are vibrant and, and there is this solidarity between the entire community and people helping each other. So we're fascinated by that. We're contributors for, for both uh, Presto and we're now uh, hoping to, to contribute to other uh, open source projects. We open our own GitHub uh, and open up to an open, uh, um, to an open source project, our Presto analyzer. So open source is, uh, is a great philosophy to, uh, to live by for us. Of course, uh, you cannot share a lot of things that are already in the pipeline or still in the pipeline. You know, we'll talk about them as in when they happen. But in the light of this announcement that you're making, if you can share the kind of roadmap or the plans that you have for the platform to just give us some insight into what to expect. So uh, now what we see with our announcement of Lucene is a lot of cases of log analytics. Again, logs are massive in size uh, and there is more and more interest to keep more and more uh, history of logs. And the, the right decision is to go to um, a, a text analytics in, on, on masses and the right decision will be to go to a data lake and then perform a search on logs from the last five to seven years. This is one use case that we're targeting uh, everywhere where it breaks, uh, where the text analytics, traditional text analytics technologies are not appropriate to do a very specific task on this scale. This is what we're targeting and, and this, uh, this is what we're, uh, we're pushing for. And uh, the second one is all the um, uh, uh, folder analysis in all its, uh, in all its form. For cybersecurity, um, this this is uh, this is very helpful because cybersecurity is a lot of also address analysis to detect threats and and and, uh, and patterns that uh, pattern recognition that uh, they want to do on text and that's also a direction and um, and the, the marketing like an e-commerce use case of folder analysis. So these are the domains we're focusing on and we're going to give more and more features to uh, uh, to support that. Ori, uh, once again, thank you for sitting down with me today and talk about these new capabilities that you are adding to the platform and also go a bit deeper into how, you know, customers are trying to solve it and how you're making it easy for them. And as usual, I will look forward to have you again on the show. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Always a pleasure. I would be very glad to be back.